Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. So we see this smiling little guy. Well, <laughs> he's not so little. And waving to the sky is really what he's doing to perhaps our space brothers and sisters, perhaps the Anunnaki, perhaps the gods that come and mine gold. Well, this is over at Nazca, Nazca, Peru. And you guys are probably familiar with this. The Nazca lines are famous. They're enormous. They're gigantic uh, petroglyphs that basically you can't see clearly from the ground what they are. They're so massive. But if you fly over, you could see what they are. Now, the thought is that these things were built sometime around in between 200 BC and about 200 AD. So who were they trying to hail down flying by overhead? I mean, seriously. What other explanation could there be for drawing these things that are so big you could only see what they are from the sky? In the past year, we saw a lot more of these were discovered as well. Over 140 new Nazca lines discovered. And we finally have clues to their use. And so some of this was discovered by AI. And, uh, you know, it's just a fascinating thing. Why would people put so much effort into making these gigantic geoglyphs that measure hundreds of meters long? Perhaps to be seen by deities in the sky. Perhaps. Or are they marking something astronomically? It's really interesting. It's a fascinating mystery. And, you know, especially with Peru, Peru's fascinating. Peru has tons of UFO sayings. It's one of the UFO uh, capitals of the world. And people around uh, between this area and Cusco uh, re report sightings of UFOs on a regular basis, as well as sometimes beings, unusual beings. And the locals there just know that these... These are the ones that have always been here. And these are the gods that so many have spoken about. And they're still coming and going. So uh, it's just a fascinating thing. Absolutely fascinating. And if we look at the Anunnaki legends, there's most definitely a connection uh, between the Anunnaki over in Babylonia, Sumeria, the Middle East, and also over here in the Americas. As we've heard a uh, tale of Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent being, uh, some think he is Thoth. Uh, and there is definitely an Anunnaki connection in the Americas. It does say that they were in more than one place. And they were also in Africa, as we know, South Africa. And I should say really Southern Africa. Uh, some countries above what is today South Africa as well. And, you know, there's gold mines there that are hundreds of thousands of years old. And we supposedly wouldn't be working gold mines two, three hundred thousand years ago, according to modern science, with the thought that Homo sapiens sapiens just basically developed then. Unless we look at the Sumerian stories, you know, about the Anunnaki and the Ijiji, and the Ijiji were sort of a slave race of the Anunnaki, and they refused to mine anymore and do the hard work, and so. According to those legends, man was created to basically do the hard work for them all. And, uh, you know, coincidentally, we actually have minds where the stories say it was all happening. And, you know, it's fascinating when we see this connection. There's a lot to look into. But how many of you guys know about this? NASA satellite shares a new image of the Mari Man. Now, this is an Australian carving that has puzzled scientists for decades. Look at this giant carving. It's unclear who created this giant geoglyph or why, but the large earthen figure has drawn attention to a remote part of South Australia for two decades. NASA confirms one of the greatest modern art mysteries is still going strong in Australia. A pilot discovered a mysterious 2.6 mile long geoglyph are you kidding me 2.6 miles long and it's of an aboriginal hunter back in 1998 etched into the earth and nobody knows how it got there wow you know this thing is 2.6 miles long 
and it's pretty damn good. <laughs> Look at it. That's a pretty accurate geo uh, glyph. Why would they do this? Again, only visible from the sky to actually be able to make out what it is. This is really, you know, again, to me, this is more solid evidence that there were beings that were literally flying around in the sky. I do think that there's interdimensional beings. Actually, I know there's interdimensional beings. Uh, but I also think, you know, there are beings, perhaps it is the interdimensional beings as well, that can materialize and dematerialize. Think if a society, again, was just a million years ahead of us. And there are stars that are far older than our sun. So there could be societies out there that are way more advanced than us. And just on the current path that we are on, how much more advanced would we be in a thousand years, two thousand years? Will we not appear to be like gods? So, I mean, it's not a stretch. And to me, it's, it's an obvious thing that this, this is another thing pointing to the fact that there were beings that were up in the sky and humans on the ground were trying to get their attention or at least manufacturing things so that, you know, they would be seen. Pretty, pretty amazing stuff. This thing is 2.6 miles long. That is incredible. So perhaps more evidence of interaction with very advanced beings on this planet. You know, I think anybody that denies that there were, there were advanced societies here, advanced beings, whether uh, they're extraterrestrial, interdimensional in origin, or both, perhaps in Earth as well. We should put all three of those things in there. There might actually be all three of those things going on concurrently. I, I just think the evidence is absolutely overwhelming because we could just bring up one thing after another and you know spend hundreds and thousands of hours pouring through all the evidence. There is so much evidence that we are not alone and that we have been, been visited for a very long time, perhaps longer than Homo sapiens sapiens have been around, as more than likely that is the case. We keep finding anomalous things in our world. Again, 2.6 miles long, this amazing geoglyph. And then, of course, we have all the ones over at NASCA as well, as well as so many other anomalous items. Our history is truly, probably, uh, absolutely freaking amazing. And, uh, you know, hopefully we will know it at some point in time, the true history, because what we have been told is just... It's not even a drop in the bucket of truth and of reality. What do you guys make of all this? As always, like, share, subscribe. Join us over on Patreon and Ko-Fi. And make sure you're subscribed to the second channel as well, EE Arts. God bless, my friends. Keep your eyes to the sky. Namaste.